What's up everyone? So today we're going to be talking about Crisis 2 for the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. So Crisis 2 is a first person shooter that's actually been one of my most anticipated titles for a while now. Uh, it is the sequel to uh, the PC Game of the Year of 2007, or uh, 2007 I believe, uh, called Crisis. And basically Crisis was a first person shooter where you had, you stepped into the shoes of a unique soldier called Nomad, and you'd have this unique nano suit uh, that you wore basically gave you superhuman strength gave you uh, the ability to move faster than uh, anyone else the ability to jump higher, the ability to go uh, invisible basically and uh, there's also the ability you know to basically take more damage than anyone else could it was like the ultimate the ultimate war uh, you know weapon of that time so with Crisis 2 the sequels here and uh, basically they changed a lot and we're going to be breaking it down to the story, the graphics, and the gameplay. We're, ba we're basically going to break this game down to basically what its core roots are. So, the story of Crisis 2 is pretty simple. You play as a character named Alcatraz, and he is basically a Marine who was uh, sent with his squad to go and assist this guy who uh, basically wore the suit called Prophet. And uh, you're basically going there thinking we're just going to be going there, assisting him, and then you're, you know, you're pulling out and everything. And you guys are ambushed by uh, the Ceph, who are an alien force who invaded uh, New York and basically are trying to take it over. So you're here, and basically your whole squad gets killed, and you're left uh, basically saved. But you basically get saved by a uh, prophet, the you know the guy who's wearing the nano suit, and he puts you basically puts you on the suit, saying, you know, I'm infected with this thing. You are my last hope, and he goes ahead and shoots himself in the face. So you wake up. And uh, basically you have this nano suit on that you have no idea who put it on you or stuff or, you know, how, how are we to even use it. You just have this thing on, the suit tells you, you know, go find uh, this guy named Nathan Gould and he'll tell you some more information. So you just go do your objective. So the whole game is basically you picking up where the character left off. You're cleaning up the mess that uh, Prophet left. So... You basically have this thing, and while you're, you know, doing objectives, you basically get more used to, to the nano suit and start realizing what its true powers are. So that's pretty cool. Um, talking about graphics now, I know a lot of people on, on the packaging. If you probably can't see right now, but on the packaging it says this is the best looking game on console. This is the best looking game on the Xbox 360. On the PlayStation 3, it basically looks the same. All right, there is a couple, you know, there's a couple good scenes. I'm not gonna, the, the whole game looks pretty much good, but if you're going to compare it to an exclusive like uh, Killzone 3, God of War 3, you know, Uncharted 2, you're going to compare it to exclusives such as those, then you're, you're going to find that those games just offer a little bit more quality. The graphics of this game are really good, and it actually proves that not all multi-platform games have bad graphics. A lot of these developers... Who develop a game that who develop a game that has you know multi that's meant for a multi-platform game mainly it comes out on both PlayStation 3, Xbox, and PC. Basically, do all this work on the Xbox 360 side and then copy and paste it over onto a PS3 Blu-ray disc and they sell it that way. At least that's what I like to call it because graphically the game is going to be looking the same. They don't want to they want to give anyone a fair shot of you know who's better and stuff like that. So with uh, this game, there's basically a lot that, uh, you know, basically a lot of stuff that's going on, and as far as graphics goes, it looks good, you know, it um, plays pretty good too, along with it, uh, but we'll talk about the more in the gameplay side, so, graphically, you know, good looking game, 
a pretty, I would have to say that it, it is, you know, like I said, the best looking game on Xbox 360. There's some really good parts in here that actually look better than most of any games today. In particular, the lighting effects. This game takes volumetric lighting and puts a whole new definition on it. Sometimes it looks next to the real thing, you know, to, you know, you take a picture in real life of a volumetric lighting effect hitting the trees. I mean, it looks just like the real thing. So, the graphical power that they used in this game were, is, is pretty good. And the CryEngine, at first, was, not de was developed in a way that it wasn't really supposed to be on consoles. That's why Crisis was not possible on the console version, because there's just so much that the CryEngine rendered all at one time that consoles just couldn't do that. So, the CryEngine 3 has been modified to basically have the Xbox 360, you know, basically have it so that it looks good on the Xbox 360 and good on the PlayStation 3, while still maintaining uh, you know, a smooth enough frame rate and stuff like that. So, the CryEngine 3 is, to my knowledge, they said it is the only, uh, the only engine that runs everything in real time. I mean, everything you see is done in real time, so that's pretty impressive, and uh, the game really looks well and handles well because of that. So, let's move on to gameplay. It's a first-person shooter. This is a unique one, like I said. You have the powers of the, na of the nano suit. So, with the nano suit two that you that you have on, um, basically your powers are combined with other powers. So, if you want to basically use cloak as well as use a sprinting ability, you can run fast and use cloak at the same time. If you want to use maximum armor as well as you know use you know strength and stuff, you can use that at the same time. Basically, you switch between your armor mode and then your cloak mode. Uh, armor mode allows you to, you know, absorb more damage. Um, cloak mode allows you to basically become barely invisible, or um, you know, barely visible. So, cloak mode works as in a sense as you just press a button, cloak engaged, you're on there, you're basically uh, invisible to enemies, alright? Um, as far as armor mode goes, press that, you can absorb more bullets and stuff like that. Now. You can't manipulate these powers, meaning that you can't say, okay, I want to use maximum armor throughout the whole game, and I'm just going to be able to use it, and there won't be a problem. This game has an energy meter, and the more you get hit, or the more you use the power, uh, for example, the longer you stay in cloak, or the more times you get hit by, uh, you know, armor mode, basically that depletes your energy. So, the more energy you use, then your nano suit's going to be basically become unusable for a certain amount of time, and it has to charge up again. So it allows you to be very conservative, as well as pretty much manage your powers uh, responsibly. Responsibly. So basically, taking the nano suit 2.0, which is this really powerful weapon, you know that a lot of uh, you know that basically you're the only person in the game that actually has, and then putting that into basically an environment, an urban environment that. A lot of soldiers out to kill you. It really requires you to use tactical stuff like that, which I really, you know, enjoyed during my playthrough of the game. All right, so you have the nano suit powers. Um, talking about the game's AI now. This AI is smart, but it's not revolutionary. This the AI will notice if you're walking up close to them. They'll be like, you know, they can hear footsteps and stuff like that. So they'll say, okay, what's that? And they'll turn around. They'll investigate. There's some weird clipping though. You'll see. You'll see basically the AI running into, uh, you know, running into basically cover. They'll be just running into a wall and they'll be stuck there. Pretty stupid stuff. I mean, we've seen it all in games before, but for the most part, the AI is pretty good. They still they'll see you. They'll make sure they spot you. They'll call out to enemies. They'll you know they'll get reinforcements here, and they'll stay in radio chatter. And it's pretty cool. All right, so that's the AI. When you shoot, you also get hit reactions from the AI. I mean, if you shoot him in the leg, they'll basically stand over and, you know, basically crouch and, you know, they'll just pretty much fall, fall on their faces. All right? So, if you shoot him in the arm, you know, they'll basically, like, be thrown back. So, the hit reactions are pretty, really done well here. As far as physics and stuff go, the game has destructible environments. I wouldn't say that... It's nothing like Call of Duty, but you'll be playing a game and all of a sudden this big enemy, all of a sudden this enemy with a rocket launcher shoots a missile at you and the whole wall explodes and you fall on your ass. And it's pretty cool. Physics isn't, isn't perfected. It isn't anything that you're going to find is incredible. But it, it is there and during your playthrough of the game, 
you know, you'll get, uh, you'll find destructible environments, alright, so, that's, that's also cool to implement into the game. Uh, what else? Let's see, weapons. You get a large amount of weapons. It's not vast, it's not anything like Call of Duty has, but it's a pretty good amount of weapons. You have three assault weapons, two, uh, two submachine guns, uh, four pistols, I believe one sniper rifle, and you get their missile launcher and your C4 and stuff, so pretty cool weapons. There are going to be a time where you're going to be basically stuck into in the game, and they're going to be basically saying, all right, blow up this door, which is a, another time where, you know, the physics come in and stuff like that, so um, the weapons were pretty good. All weapons feel very, uh, at the same time, this is a future, this is future warfare. This game does take place in 2023, all right, so you can't pick up, there's going to be, you know, these science fiction weapons, but it's not going to be anything that you're going to basically say, wow, that looks really unreal. All right, all the weapons look pretty much real. It's basically, it's near future warfare, so you're still going to have your SCAR in there, uh, your F-2000, which they, you know, they rename a couple of weapons, but it's in there, all right? And um, you have C4 and your rocket launcher and stuff like that, which is also pretty cool. Um, so during your playthrough of the game, you can actually customize your weapons all in real time. So me meaning if I'm approaching a level and I see uh, basically some enemies down there on this, you know, bridge, right, I can go up and pull up my weapon like this and do like a scope attachment if I wanted to. And you can pick off enemies with headshots and add silencers and customize your weapon to your ability. So if you're more, if you're more, if you're more of a person who needs like iron sights, but you want like that silence weapon feel, you can add a silencer and weapon sight, you know, no big problem. You can also add extended mags and, you know, special ammunition and stuff like that, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, you'll also be able to modify and uh, customize your nano suit. You'll, um, you'll be able to add certain abilities, like you can move faster and use less energy. Um, you can do powerful attacks and stuff like that. Um, you can have your you can have the suit tell you when enemies are close by and are being detected and stuff like that and you can basically have the suit because be basically customizable to your gameplay liking which I thought was um pretty cool and you get these points for killing uh, aliens they call them nano catalyst points and they're little particles that float around and you have to basically walk through them and you get points and you spend them on that so it's pretty cool and it's a good way I think I you know actually having the game, you know, uh, be basically at the same time, uh, at the same time competitive and also, you know, hard because you got to make sure you have to kill these enemies like in a certain way. I believe, I believe every headshot for an alien equals catalyst points. I think it's something like that. But anyway, uh, that's implemented and you can also, you know, use those customizable, those customizable abilities to your liking. So if you're more of a person who likes stealth, customize it for stealth, more of a person who likes to run and gun you can do that. So that's pretty also that's really cool about the game also. You can play the game any way you want to. You can play it with stealth, you can play it with uh, basically all attack modes and it's really cool. So and the levels are really open, which meaning that basically this is the game. Since it takes place in New York it's basically here. Take take Grand Theft Auto 4's world, alright? Take that huge open world and make it so that you have to play the campaign. You couldn't free roam. So you'll get to this point where you're basically uh, basically on a building, right? And you can either choose to go that way, or you can choose to go that way, or, you know, different ways. And I thought that was pretty cool, because that means that everyone's playthrough can be different, the way they handle stuff. You can leave those troops on the ground alone if you want, or you can leave the troops on, on top, you can take those out, you, you can snipe away, you can do whatever you want. So, I really like the open environments, it made basically the game feel a lot more open and really cool, so I enjoyed that. All right. So, in conclusion, Crisis 2 is a game that I think is really, really well made. At the same time, this game has been getting delays and delays and delays and delays. It's supposed to come out last year. This game was announced in 2000, in late 2008 or early 2009, I think. But, in the end, when it came out, I think it really did offer a campaign that was very strong and very well had a really well-told story offered great graphics and stuff like that, especially if you bought the PC version, and basically offered gameplay that was both unique and intuitive and also familiar for some people. So, 
Crisis 2, excellent game. I highly recommend it uh, if you know if you own any of those next gen consoles. And uh, play the campaign on the multiplayer, it's all really fun. Alright, so as far as multiplayer goes, check out my multiplayer playlist uh, section on my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and uh, I'll see you guys later.